We're excited to be interviewing President Donald Trump today. And yes, you guessed it, the moms are at Mar-a-Lago. We're so delighted that he's taking some time out today to talk about his vision for America, and most importantly, the issues that are facing moms today. Stay with us. Welcome to the Moms for America podcast. Each week, special guests tackle the issues facing the moms of America today. Discussions include personal stories and advice on how moms can build a strong foundation of faith, family, and freedom in their homes and country. I'm Debbie with Moms for America. How are you? Nice, nice to, to see meet. you. Nice to see you. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. President, Thank for you. meeting with the Moms for America podcast right. here. Um, we're just thrilled to be here. So thanks. I know how busy you are, and you're really so Thank special to us. So let's get into this here. Um, you spoke at the March for Life, and you talked about how moms were heroes. And the crowd went wild. Why are moms heroes to you? Because they do everything. <laughs> uh, they are so incredible. Uh, you look at, uh, I hate to use the word statistics, but statistically, where you have a great mom, you have a great young woman or young man. It just works out that way. And dads are very important also, but right. that mom is so special. And uh, taking people that really would have had a rough time and uh, made them uh, super, yeah. made them tremendously successful. The love, whatever it is, there's a lot of ingredients. You know, moms do a lot of things that people don't think about. And maybe it's a little things that count, but uh, very special. My mom was very special, very special people. Did your mom ever think that you would become president of the United States? I've always wanted to ask that question to Probably you. Probably <laughs> not, but you know, every once in a while she'd say, oh, you should do that. But uh, no, I don't think so. But uh, she was a great mom, very loving mom, a very good person. One of our other favorite moms is Melania. Mm -hmm. How is Melania? She's great. She's uh, doing a tremendous job with my son, who's a fantastic guy. Yes. He's a good tall guy, too, very tall. <laughs> How tall is he now? I'd say six eight. Oh my goodness! So he's up there, right? Yeah. But he's a great, he's a great young man, and he's a very good student. And uh, I think he's doing a good job, Baron. He's, I think he's doing a very good job. He's 17 now, Baron, right? Yes. Okay, so at about four years old, there's that CNN interview with him, and it was the cutest thing ever because you said to him, "Listen, no drugs, right? Right. No alcohol, no cigarettes, straight A's, no tattoos." Are those words? the advice that you're still sharing with your grandchildren now? Well, I do, I do. <laughs> and uh, the tattoos, I think, are in a little different category. You know, you have people with personal preference, that's right. their preference. But no drugs and no cigarettes. And uh, it's just, in the old days, I had a brother who was a fantastic guy. He always look, he'd look at me and say, no drugs, no alcohol, no cigarettes. But actually, the drugs was very m much later, really, because if you look at drugs today, it's like, Today, so much is drugs, right. less is alcohol. Cigarettes, I always add in. It's not a positive thing. Right. And if they can avoid it, that would be, that's a great thing. But uh, I would tell my kids before they, they'd see them every day, I'd say, no drugs, no alcohol, no cigarettes. And yeah, so important. Ivanka would say sometimes, Dad, I know, I know what you're going to say, Dad. Please don't say it. <laughs> And I think it had an impact. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Look at your kids. They're stellar. You know, Amazing. When you, when you have one of your children or all of your children on drugs, it just puts them at such a disadvantage. Right. It's, uh, you got to keep them away. Mm -hmm. And it's much easier to keep them away. Once they get hooked, that's a whole different ball right. game. But when you preach to them before they right. get addicted, Right. Because that's what it is. It's an unbelievable chemical addiction and right. mental addiction and everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, it's just so much easier. Mm -hmm. If they don't start, it's so much easier. Right, that's it. And you're doing such a great job, and you always have con concerned with the fentanyl and the drugs yeah. coming across yeah. the border. Um, thank you for what you've done yeah. to make our country great. And uh, unfortunately, now it's all being reversed. Now it's been reversed at a level that nobody's ever seen. People are flowing yeah. in. Drug dealers are flowing in. I was working on a deal. would have happened very quickly with China. They were not not going to make it. They were going to make it part of the death penalty if they make it in China mm -hmm. and put it here. Once I was out, nobody ever picked that up. Most of it, the fentanyl, is made in China. Right. But you have other drugs coming in, too. And 
We had the border the strongest it's ever been. Now it's the weakest it's ever been. Terrible. In three years, it's gone from being the strongest. We had the strongest border we've ever had. Human trafficking, largely women. Right. I mean, you talk about moms. I mean, human trafficking, what's worse? And it's mostly women. And uh, we had that to the lowest point it was in 51 years. We had everything really in great shape yeah. in this country. And, and now it's just so sad to see. Yeah. Let's talk about education, too, right? right? 50 million students are in public education, public education right. system. They have become indoctrination centers. Um, and they are filled with inappropriate materials. What would you do to help us with education? Well, we're going to end that. And these indoctrination programs yeah. are out of control. Right. And we're ending it. It's just like, you know, men and women sports and uh, sexual mutilation of children. Who would think that we'd have to talk about sexual mutilation of children? If you go back 10 or 15 years and somebody said that, you wouldn't mm -hmm. even know what they're talking about. And now it's actually a point in a campaign where you have to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And many people on the other side think it's okay. I mean, we're not talking for our health. People think it's okay. The sexual mutilation of children, think of it, that we actually have to put that down as a talking point. Or men will not be playing in women's sports. We have to put that down as a talking point. Right. Who would ever think you'd allow men to play in women's sports? No. So the world has gone crazy, but this country has gone crazy. It sure has. And those are two huge issues that the moms yeah. are talking about yeah. all the time. Gender confusion, right? It's yeah. a, like you said, it's an all-time high. Right. Um, so thank you so much that you're going to help protect our children because we, we it is it. horrific. And we'll do it fast, too. We'll sign orders left and right. We'll do it fast. It's gone totally out of control. And what I don't understand, who could, who could think this is good? No one. Who could think, unless you're trying to destroy our country, who could think this is good? Parental rights really goes on the hand in hand with this. Moms are so concerned about their parental rights, right? They're, they if they go to a, a school board meeting, they're a domestic yeah. terrorists. If they they don't agree with something, then all of a sudden their children may be taken away. How will you protect so parental rights? So that's a rights? third category. You talk about parental rights. Yeah. Who wouldn't think that like <laughs> you have parental rights? We are with you for parental rights. Right. Again, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you wouldn't have to talk about that. Of course you have parental rights. Today they take away your parental rights. They are. And I think the Republicans are going to do very well in this coming election. If we don't do, if we don't win the election, the presidential election of 2024, it's going to be the most important election in the history of our country. I think our country is going to be essentially finished. That's what we're, that's what we're hearing all across the country. The moms are... I hate to say well, this, they have word, to vote but for terrified. Trump. They have to vote for Trump. Look, the Republicans talk in terms of religion. They're going after the Catholic Church. They're going after Protestants. They're going after evangelicals. They're going after so many groups. It's not even possible to think this way. Right. And then you'll have Catholics, as an example, where they're really something happened. I'm saying, what did they do wrong? Mm -mm. But they're going after Catholics at a level that nobody's seen before in this country. Now, why would a Catholic vote for a guy like Biden? Right. It doesn't make sense. But I think we're going to win. And if we don't win, big trouble. I think we're going to win, too. Mandates and the COVID vaccine um, mandates, yeah. they're back in discussion now. Yeah. What, would, what would that be under your administration? So you'll you'll have, protect us, no, I know, no, with those yes, mandates. Yes, absolutely. And the mandates are gone, and the mask mandates are gone. All of the mandates are gone. It's got to be choice. You have to have choice. Some people want to do this. They want to take. They want to take the vaccine, and other people don't. And you have to have choice. And feeding it to children where they don't need it to anywhere near the extent, but really, essentially, they don't need it, is absolutely crazy. So the mandates are gone. There'll, there'll be no mandates. You know, we let governors make those decisions, which is the federal system, which is the way it should be. And a lot of Republican governors got it right. They didn't do the big closures. And if it was closed, it was closed for a much lesser period of time. Uh, South Carolina was great, mm -hmm. and uh, South Dakota was great, sure. and some of the states were absolutely great, and some didn't do as well. The ones that did really poorly, though, were the Democrat-run states. They would ju they shut down everything, and their numbers were the same or worse, yeah. which is sort of, you would think that wouldn't be possible, actually. <laughs> they would have a shutdown that was right. incredible, and their numbers were worse. So, uh, no, some of our Republican governors did a fantastic job. Yeah. The economy. Moms are figuring out what to do. Can they buy a gallon of milk yeah. or a gallon of gas? Yeah. 
I mean, pretty wow, bad. It is so bad. It's so incredible. Be, I'm going shopping. My 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 grocery bill is tripled. Yep, we're going to be drilling like you haven't seen before. We're going to get the energy down. When the energy comes down, everything else is going to. It's such a big category. Yeah. That's what started the inflation. Inflation is a country buster. It breaks up countries. It's you go back 200 years, 300 years, and you take a look. Inflation is a country buster, and we had the worst inflation in 72 years. And what we're doing is we'll be getting the energy prices way down. Everything else is going to follow. Interest rates are going to follow. You'll be able to buy a house again. A lot of good things are going to happen. Food prices will start coming down, too. And, you know, when they say, oh, gee, we only have 4 or 5 percent inflation now, first of all, they're not adding certain categories to that. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, when you take a look at what they're saying and what they're doing, everything is the opposite of what it should be. Every single thing they do is the opposite. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get the energy cost down. Other things are going to follow. And interest rates, very importantly, will follow. What about family? You talk a lot about the importance of family, how important it is to you. How can we restore our families again? Give them hope. Yeah, yeah. Uh, America's built on the family unit. Yeah, family and God. Yeah. Okay, you take a look at religion where it's just not, COVID I think probably hurt it badly, but it's just yeah. not what it was. When people have that feeling of God, yes. they, they want God in their lives, it just works out a lot better. It is. It, it, it really also works is. out better for a country. Right. Faith, family, and freedom. It, That's it's it. true. It's true. Now, family is a very important thing. You people do a great job. I mean, Thank you. It's, uh, it's really what you've done is amazing. How do you do this? How, where do you draw your strength from? We're talking about faith. Where do you, how, how do you do this every day? How do you get up and fight? for every single one of us. It's probably the biggest question I get. The second biggest would be, they're not going to be allowed to do it again. Okay, you know what that means. Okay, that's number two. But number one is, how do you do it? One of the reasons is that I have the highest poll numbers people have virtually ever seen. You're yeah. beating these people by 60 points, and we're beating Biden by a lot. And that gives us hope, because if we take over the country from the standpoint of winning the election of 2024, it's all going to be okay. We're going to make it, not only make America great again, we're going to make it better than ever before. And we're going to get rid of the horrible people, some of these people, from prisons, from mm -hmm. mental institutions. They're coming in from prisons, mental institutions, and many terrorists. We're going to get them out. It's going to be a mass deportation and get them out. And we're getting them back to their countries where they came from. Mm -hmm. Many of them right out of jails and prisons. So if we win this election, which we have to. I don't think we have a choice. Right. We're going to make our country great again, and maybe better than ever before. And safe. Safety is another huge, huge yep. issue for moms. We are, um, we're just, it's, it's troubling times to raise a family. Yep. Um, would you just share some words of encouragement to our moms? Uh, some hope? Because I know that you're talking about saving America. Yeah. And uh, we need to hear from you. Um, some great encouraging words because they're we need it if you're in a good system yeah if we get what we're getting where we have proper people coming into our country legally if we get the prisoners and the people murderers drug deals pouring into our country we get them out our system is good the chances of a mom being successful are much greater and it's 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 much easier Otherwise, it's a very difficult thing for a mom. If we're in a bad system, right. and that system is turning very bad right now with Biden and these people, it's turning Marxist and fascist and communist. It's a horrible system. They go after political opponents, all of the things they do. Right. But when we get it going, it's going to make it a lot easier for moms, and that's what I want to do. Well, thank you, President okay. Trump. We um, Blessings to you, and thank you for taking time with the Moms for America podcast. We do appreciate you. Thank you very much. God bless. Great honor. Thank you. Thank you.